What's up everyone? I'm Sunny with the Be Kind Crew and I want to welcome you to Connect to STEM TV. Organized by the University of Arizona College of Medicine, Phoenix, in partnership with Cox Communications and the Arizona SciTech Festival. That's right, you're about to enter the wonderful world of STEM and have fun with your very own project. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer from Radio. Do you know how your cell phone can make a call? How are you able to do school on your computer or play online games with friends in different places? At Radio, we help make telecommunication services like what you do on your phone and computer possible. Gillian and Reed are going to show you how all of this works. Hi, I'm Gillian. I take care of marketing at Radio. And this guy, I think he's an engineer or something? Hi, my name is Reed. I do nerdy engineering type things. Uh, we're located here in Tempe. And we're going to take a look at our digital city today. So, Reed, tell me, what is telecom exactly? Telecom? No, that's a good question, Gillian. Uh, it's actually quite technical. But simply put, it is the sending and receiving of information over a medium. And a medium is going to be wires or cell towers or things like that. So does telecom mean that I can talk to my friends and say New York City? Well, telecom doesn't really mean that you can talk to your friends in New York City. Uh, it means that because of the technology, you can talk to your friends anywhere around the world, not just New York City. So how does my cell phone work? Like, how does it get the signal? Well, there's this tiny little radio that's inside of this thing that runs off of the battery in your cell phone. The radio is kind of similar to what you listen to in the car, and I'm not talking about Sirius XM, I'm talking about the regular FM stations. Uh, but the problem is, is that it talks to nearby cell towers. So that is what determines what your signal is gonna be, whether it's weak or strong, or how many bars you have. Okay, so those funny little trees we see around the city, they kind of look fake, but real maybe. Are those cell towers also? Yeah, we call those camouflage towers. And a lot of times around town, you'll see it looks like a palm tree or a pine tree. It kind of sticks out like a sore thumb and they want it to make it look good. So is that also the same way that my computer gets internet? Well, yes and no. Uh, your computer is a lot of times connected via a wire and the wire goes to a router, the router goes out to the street, the street goes to wherever. Gotcha. So if I cut the wire, does that mean that I can skip my distance learning class? <laughs> I bet you wish you could. No, if you cut the wire, a lot of times what just happens is the wireless takes over inside of your computer. So it switches from a hardwired connection to a wireless connection. So like Wi-Fi, so does Wi-Fi what works my cell phone also? Well, in, in a sense it does, uh, because it does transmit and receive a signal. But the problem is, is that it's, uh, it's determined on the power, really. You have to be closer to the, we'll call it the tower, it's your router in your house. You have to be closer to it because there's less power. So is that why my Wi-Fi is slow sometimes at home? Well, slow Wi-Fi can be the, the, the cause of many things, and that is, your brother or your sister playing their games online, mom and dad streaming their movies, Aunt Edna playing Spotify, and you trying to do your homework at the same time. All of these things that are connected to our network is bandwidth. So when I go to the store sometimes, like Target or Starbucks, sometimes you'll get a pop-up and it says there's nearby Wi-Fi. How exactly does that work? Well, we were talking about the cell towers that look like trees. Mm -hmm. There's also Wi-Fi towers that are mounted to poles around town, and there's also Wi-Fi towers that are mounted to the strands on the electrical wires. And so those strand mount antennas provide Wi-Fi for whoever's driving by or in the area. So bandwidth, what is that? Well, bandwidth is really the uh, amount of data that you can transmit over either a wired or a wireless connection in a given period of time. Okay, so like gaming, do you want to use a lot of bandwidth? I mean, I'm not a gamer, but... Yeah, I'll tell you what, the gamers use a lot of bandwidth. And the reason is, is because you're connected to all these people
people all around the world playing this game. The problem with it, all the bandwidth that it uses, and again, and, and this streaming Spotify and mom and dad are watching a movie, is it can cause lag issues in your game. So you use this word lag. Tell me a little bit more about lag. Lag, lag is important, especially in the video games. You know, when you're when you're playing these one-on-one -on -one player games or these multiplayer games, uh, lag is what happens when the connection to the router, the connection to the internet, is really really slow. You can see it a lot of times when you're downloading movies or you're downloading songs, and it takes quite a long time to do. People that play games experience lag when they're trying to move their person, and it seems to stutter in position. Uh, lag can actually mean the difference between whether you win the game or lose the game. Thanks, Reed. So we covered three main topics today. We talked about camouflage in tennis, mm -hmm. we talked about shaman in tennis, mm -hmm. and we talked about... Cell towers. Right. Yes. So those are three types of technologies that contribute to the telecom market, correct? That's right. That's right. Okay, great. Well, thanks for all the additional information today on telecom. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone, for participating, and we'll see you soon. See ya. Bye. What great information. And now I'd like to welcome Ross and Jennifer from Radio, who are gonna talk a little bit more and also answer your questions. And I also wanna give a big shout out to Radio, who is one of our Connect to STEM proud sponsors and has been with us for several years. So we're so happy to have this partnership. So Ross and Jennifer, I'm gonna let you take it away. Great, thanks Caroline. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Ross and I are gonna just kind of have a conversation about some of these topics and um, we'd love to have your questions as well. So Ross, um, Gillian and Reed were talking a lot about cell signals. Why does my cell signal seem to decrease when I'm in a building or when it's raining? Well, Jennifer, um, there are a lot of things that come into play with cell signals. Um, if it's raining, um, there's ionic, ions that tend to be interfered with, um, walls, materials, uh, metals, all these things have an impact on RF signal. Um, with lower frequencies, they tend to be more long, um, long term or, or long cycles. And they're actually, they actually do better penetrating walls and windows and stuff like that. And shorter frequencies or higher frequencies actually are shorter. So they have a little bit more of a challenge to penetrate these materials. So there are a lot of variables that ha that come into play with that, and mainly it's materials, it's the environment. Um, you know, RF signals have some sensitivity to all that. Okay, got it. Um, so when I'm trying to stream Netflix or Hulu, sometimes it says buffering. Why does it do that, and what does that mean? It's trying to preload some of the the content. The buffering may be where you have a, um, an issue with the amount of content that's coming in and it has to buffer it. So it basically puts in a, a, a buffer and uh, kind of keeps it relevant to get ahead of where the video is going to show. So it, it needs to preload it, I guess you can put it in that perspective. So sometimes I'm trying to watch Netflix and my brother's trying to watch Disney Plus. Does that impact that buffering? Does it take longer when we're both trying to watch something at the same yes. time? Yeah. yeah, the more signals, I'm sure most people are aware of this in their homes, when there's more things attached to the internet or the Wi-Fi connections, um, you tend to lose a little bit of bandwidth or depending on the power of, of the, uh, the signals that you're getting, the more you put on that, that line or that, that, in, that service, uh, it's going to degrade over time. And by degrading, you mean it gets worse and slows down? Correct. And you, you tend to lose bandwidth. So bandwidth, think of it like a pipe. You know, basically you have a, an infinite or a specific amount of data that can fit in that pipe at a certain time, depending on the power, depending on where the location is, et cetera, et cetera. The more you put on that, it, 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 it tends to move towards the boundaries of what it can accept. So it, it tends to slow down. Okay, got it. Um, so I have good Wi-Fi in my bedroom, but when I go to the living room, it slows down a lot. Why does that happen? Um, it really depends on the power of, of the unit, the, the wireless connection, where the router is located, uh, how many walls it goes through, uh, all again, the same things that, that tend to come to play. The antennas have to be able to, the connection has to be made. And if it's through multiple walls, if it's farther away, all those things have an impact on the signal and the signal strength. 
Okay, that makes sense. So when we talked about cell towers um, earlier on that video, so when I get a text message, how does that cell tower know to send it to my phone as opposed to all the other phones in the area? So a text message comes in in like a packet of data. Um, it has a timestamp. It has your content information or your, your cell phone number. It gets transferred to the cell tower. The cell tower sends it back to your cell phone. It kind of defines all that information, who, who, who you're sending it to, the time it was sent, and kind of the overview of that. It's a SMS type package. Um, okay, great. Um, so when I go to a different country, back when we traveled a lot more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the good old days, I guess. Exactly. Um, or, la or, or last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just last year. It seems so long ago. Um, but I can like make a phone call or send a text message to my friends back here in Arizona. How is mm -hmm. that even possible? Um, communications via cell phone are, are done several ways. There, there are, there's a bunch of uh, fiber lines that run uh, under the ocean. So it, when you talk on a cell phone, that information goes to a cell tower. That cell tower goes back to a back office, which converts that from, you know, converts the data. And then that can either be sent via satellite. It can be done sent via uh, fiber optic lines under the ocean. There's about 350 of them, I believe, that are set up today, um, basically carrying data from one continent to another. Uh, and that's really the, those are two of the main platforms that you can utilize for international um, cell coverage, I guess you could say, or, or not coverage, but communications. Okay, that's cool. Um, but then when I get on an airplane to come back here, I can't make or receive any calls. Why, why is that happening? Well, I think in the, before cell phones became so small and, you know, uh, require less power, the big bricks. I think there was a concern from the FCC in the, uh, in the past about uh, the amount of power and signals that were being put out by the cell phones themselves. And, and the concern was uh, creating interference with the plane's uh, electronics. Um, basically, they were banned in 1991 by the FCC. FCC. So um, they have, they allow data now. Um, you can, you, I mean, obviously you, you're not, you can't actually utilize your cell phone on a plane. And also I think there's some uh, discussion points, I guess, of, you know, of the plane, airplane manufacturers, you know, they make money when you use the cell, the phones that are in the plane. So I, you know, it, the FCC is of right now, you know, does you, does allow you to utilize electronics in the plane only after takeoff and before landing but uh, not cell phone. Okay, that's cool. Um, we can watch, you know, movies and stuff on the planes now too, is that that's because of the Wi-Fi that happens on planes, right? Uh, yeah, it's the in-flight entertainment. So yes, um, it's actually, yes, it's interior to the plane, correct. But the, the, okay. the yeah, so. Okay, awesome. Um, so we talked about bandwidth and how that impacts um, the streaming when, you know, me and my brother are both trying to watch different things or when he's trying to play a video game and I'm trying to watch something. But what about when we're doing school? Sometimes when everyone's doing school or work at home, it seems like it slows down too. Is that because there's too many people trying to use the same? Yeah, internet? especially in our current environment where um, pretty much most people at this point or have at some point or another between schools and work environments, we are, a lot of us are working from home, just like we are today, you know, um, the, the uh, providers, you know, they, they uh, are doing a good job of kind of keeping the content up, but as more and more people are on the network and more and more people are on your router, um, it's going to degradate the signal and it's going to create less of a service. Um, and everything from, you know, smart devices in your house take up bandwidth, uh, garage doors, uh, your cameras, your security systems, smart electronics within your house, uh, those all take up bandwidth, your TVs, they take up bandwidth. Um, so, you know, obviously, um, the more you have that's a uh, smart home, it's going to uh, impact your overall performance. Okay. Um, so if there's two or three people working or going to school from my home, what should the bandwidth be so that we can all 
do what we need to do? I don't know that question. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that because it's it, it, every every case is unique. It depends on if you're doing if you're streaming a lot of video or you're having video conferences like we are now. That takes up a lot of bandwidth. Video definitely takes up more voice and you know just standard uh, uh, data is not generally as much. But when you start streaming and you have video content, it, it definitely has a huge impact on bandwidth. And the more and more you put on there, obviously, I think initially when this uh, uh, virus uh, came to be, in, initially there was a lot of issues with uh, Zoom and not necessarily Zoom in particular, but a lot of uh, this web casting because of the amount of bandwidth, because the amount of people that were trying to get on to these platforms. I think that over the last year, they've improved that obviously. I mean, this has kind of become the norm in our society today where we can all just get on and you have what we have 20 some people on today, um, you know, and the more and more you put on there, it will, it will, it'll, it'll, it'll affect the signal um, if we're all showing video at the same time. Um, so that has a huge impact. Okay, got it. And there's a lot of different internet providers. Like I have several options for my house um, and we picked one and it seems faster than our old one. Is, mm -hmm. Are all internet providers different in that capacity? I think they all have different services. Um, I think, you know, if you're willing to pay more, you can get a fiber to the house if it's available. Um, it depends on how they have the houses set up. And if it's a newer development, a lot of those services may not be available at the time and you may have uh, a less of a um, uh, options for your high speed. Um, you know, uh, maybe older homes may have some issues with the wiring, the coaxial lines, um, especially as you went to digital TV, you need a little bit better quality. Um, the old lines that were in your house may not be that great uh, versus a newer build uh, just because the standards have changed, the, the materials, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's, you know, um, the better quality materials you use in, in a connector or, or in a connection line, cables, et cetera, will improve performance. Okay. And so when I'm trying to do something like this, where I'm on Zoom and we have um, my phone also is connected to my Wi-Fi, would it help if I turned the Wi-Fi off on my phone and had that running on the cell towers and had just my computer doing the Wi-Fi? It'll help your Wi-Fi, but I don't know. It depends on how your cell phone coverage, if you have, you know, if you have minutes that you pay for and you start using all your data, then it might cost you more. So if you have an unlimited, then obviously it's better to, I mean, again, this is my opinion. It, it doesn't necessarily mean people can do things differently, but yes, I mean, if you, the less you have on the Wi-Fi, you're going to have a better signal for the things that you do have on Wi-Fi in, if you, in your house. And it all, again, it also depends on the kind of service that you have. It depends on how your house is set up. It depends on the routers that you're using, you know, the power, everything that kind of helps uh, propagate that signal throughout your house or in your environment. Okay, got it. Um, so we've seen a lot about 5G over the past year. It's in a lot of TV commercials and online ads. What do you see in the future for cell phones and internet? Well, everything's going to be connected. I mean, um, they're actually even starting to talk about 6G now. So 5G is, it's not really fully developed. It, I know there's a lot of advertising about, you know, we have the fastest 5G, we have this and that, but it's not, the standard is not finalized yet. Um, but they're actually now in, there's a lot of activity going on regarding 6G, which is the next generation as far as services and everything else, it's going to be a lot faster. Um, there's going to be a lot more connectivity. Um, there's going to be uh, uh, probably more availability. Um, once it, once it gets launched, it's going to take time. I mean, we're still on 4G LTE in certain areas. And then, as I mentioned, the 5G that exists today is not true 5G because a, a standard is not formalized or finalized yet. So we, you know, have heard a lot about 5G. Are there challenges to 5G or 6G? Um, some people have heard about the security issues. Um, it goes around on social media from time to time that there are some security issues with it. Yeah, I, I really can't answer that because that's not really my area of expertise. I think the with any evolution of any technology, initially you're always going to have some challenges. I think, you know, I mean, security... 
I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's, I think it's dependent upon a lot of things that, uh, you know, the, the OEMs that provide them the equipment, the software that's in the equipment. Um, a lot of it's, you know, going to be fiber. So, I mean, fiber doesn't, is not as less susceptible to getting somebody to take uh, data from a wire or something like that, whereas RF emits, you know, so there are some benefits to, to 5G. There are some downfalls to it as well, I'm sure, you know, um, Again, it's not my area of expertise, but uh, I think that, in my opinion, that I think, yes, I think over time, things will improve, softwares will improve, and, uh, um, you know, the, the technology will improve to Im improve on those security measures. There's always going to be security threats as people want your data. They want, you know, they want to, there's a lot of people out there who are uh, not good people, so. <laughs> That's true. Um, so... A lot of people are kind of looking into going into the technological fields. Um, would you recommend someone get a degree in a field that deals with technology like this? And would that be like an engineering degree or uh, like an IT services degree? What kind of education might be beneficial for someone interested in technology? I think all those apply. I mean, obviously, IT is more more uh, systems and and software related. Where I mean, you have mechanical engineers, which are you know, engineering, uh, the STEM program is a great program. I think we need more scientists. We need more tech people. We need more mathematicians. We need more engineers, you know, especially the younger generation coming up. Um, I think that, I, I think it's a personal choice, but yes, I think engineering from an electrical engineer to mechanical or even civil, they, they all have value. Um, and in, in any technology, I think, you know, having an expertise in that is definitely beneficial and education is definitely a good way to get there and learn uh, other than, you know, firsthand experience. That's a good way to have the fundamentals to excel in those, um, um, I guess, those competencies. Awesome. So I, um, I work in marketing um, and I work in the analytical side of marketing because I like numbers and data and math, but um, I'm not skilled in like the engineering or techno technological side. Um, Ross, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do specifically um, related to radio and telecom and, and the defense industry as well? So I'm a marketing, I'm kind of a hybrid role. I have, a, I also do marketing, but my marketing is more product related. I am a product manager for one uh, legacy line that we have, which is Applied Engineering Products, AEP. Uh, which means that I'm responsible for, you know, the product management, the life cycles, margins, uh, you know, uh, catalogs, marketing data for that. I'm also responsible for telecom from a perspective of supporting our um, business units uh, from overseas in France and in China to help support the telecom business domestically. Uh, that's with pricing, strategic pricing, um, also the, the technologies and then, you know, customers. And then on the defense side, I'm also, uh, which is a newer role for me is more focused on defense, the defense market, learning about the defense market, uh, the technologies that are coming into play, which there's going to be some convergence between telecom and uh, the defense market. 5G is going to be utilized in the defense market. So it's all kind of uh, coming together. So um, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> Awesome. There's just a ton of different ways to get involved in technology and telecom, whether or not you're super skilled in engineering or you know a lot about the products or, you know, about marketing. Um, Ross and I both kind of work, you know, we work together a lot in marketing of these products. Um, and so it's just really a great field to get into. Um, Ross, do you have advice for someone who might be interested in a technology career and they, are, they might be in high school right now? I would say, um, you know, obviously do well in school. Um, try and get as much of the fundamentals as you can with it, whether it be math or science, those are all going to be important. Or even if you, even if you go into like a sales role, uh, but a technical sales role or a marketing role, to have the technical background is going to be uh, very important for the future, um, for telecom and for defense, these different markets, because we need skilled, skilled people in the marketplace to develop the next technologies, to de develop the next 5G or the next 6G or whatever that may be. We need this younger generation to be able to help us move forward with technology. That's where we're going um, as far as everything is going to get 
everything's going to talk to it, everything at some point. And, and we need skilled people um, to learn those fundamentals and be able to develop the next evolution of, of these products. Awesome. So we have one final question, I think, unless anyone else wants to um, chime in with anything else, but what are the parts of my phone? I know there's like a chip in there and there's, um, you know, a bunch of different, the battery, obviously the different components. What kind, of, what kind of parts are in my phone? Uh, you've got memory, you've got uh, cameras, obviously. You've got the processor, which is the brains of, of the cell phone. Uh, you've got a lot, you know, you used to have a lot of wiring and connectors in there, but that's kind of gone away. You have a lot of uh, flexible cables. Uh, you have the battery, obviously your power, um, you have your processing, your, uh, processing aspects, uh, I, again, not my area of expertise, but I mean, in general, most electronics, you have some sort of processing unit, you have some sort of memory unit, uh, you have your, your computer stuff that does your basic functions. And then you have the ones that kind of does the processing and then you have memory power, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have the radio, obviously that connect, connects to the cell tower and the antenna. So those are all integrated into the cell phone. And the antenna's yeah. inside now, right? I remember back in the day, you'd like pull up an antenna and hold hold the whole thing up to your head. Correct, yeah, it's part, it could either be part of the casing, it could be part of the electronics. It's, it, it's built into the phone. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much for that information, Ross. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ross and Jennifer. So it's just no great information this morning, my goodness. It's amazing, it really is. And like you said, just as soon as we get one down, here comes new technology on the way. So, and again, thank you to Radial for being such a great sponsor for us for all these years. I also wanna say congratulations to Cindy R, our t-shirt winner for this session. Woohoo! congratulations. We'll be getting that off to you in a little bit. Um, please take a moment to take the survey. There is the link that is in the chat function. So we ask you to do this. And we invite you to join us next week our last Saturday for Connect to STEM virtual online learning. We've got some great sessions coming up. We're gonna learn about sugar. We're gonna learn about the wonderful world of nursing plus lots more things. I also wanna say a special thank you to our team, our wonderful team of Allison and Marie and our fantastic media tech person, Jeff. Thanks for there, Anne Marie. Thanks for all your help. We want you all to stay safe, be well, mask up and bear down. We'll see you next week. Wasn't that fun? You did great. Do me a favor. Before the end of the day today, tell a friend or grown-up something you learned today. Be sure to check back for more Connect to STEM TV. There's lots more cool videos to check out. You know what? I should invite my friends to join the next session so we can work together virtually. Don't forget you need to register here. Special thanks to our sponsors, Banner Health APS for their great support. For more nerdy ideas, follow Connect to STEM on Facebook. And here are some important reminders. Be kind, wash your hands, and mask up. Bye everybody, see you next Saturday.